Is it just me or does the world not seem normal? It feels like it hasn't been normal for, for several years, but it feels like every single day and every single week that goes on, I mean, personally, I'm just stuck asking myself, there's no way that tomorrow can be crazier than it is today. And I seem to be proven wrong every single time. Today, we're talking about Venezuela having a civil war because of fraudulent elections. You have COVID is somehow making its way through the Olympics and athletes are having to forfeit their positions even when it comes to semifinals or in the finals, which is absolutely horrible to work your entire life life to compete in the olympics for covid to be the thing that takes you down from competing and then you also have people pooping in canada on beaches but also in parking lots or controversy around it there's a whole lot to talk about in this video so i encourage you guys to stick around for the entire thing if you can Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you all to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It does really help grow the channel. Without further ado, let's just get into it. So Elon Musk is very quick to jump to his platform, X, his personal app, and say uh, that he called Maduro a dictator uh, because of the fraudulent Venezuela elections. For those who are not in the loop, Venezuela just had elections and you had a total of 109% voters. Which doesn't make sense. You know how you know conservatives are up 43%, liberals in Canada are up 20%, blah, 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 for a total of 100% when you include all the parties. Somehow Venezuela got to 109.5%. Multiple parties said, we win, we win. And it's all been very confusing. And then the current president uh, basically uses the military and the police to go and shoot people, which is obviously footage that we can't take a look at here on this platform, but it's circulating all over X. There are actually people dying because of these elections, because of the protests. There are people out in the streets protesting these elections, and it's turned into a full communist dictatorship there, which obviously is why Justin Trudeau hasn't said anything about it. And it's getting really ugly and people's lives are literally ending. Uh, but it's gotten so bad that even on X, Elon Musk, it seems like, has removed his official government check mark. So for those who may not know, there's a gray one for actual government officials like this one right here on the bottom photo. And the top photo, the blue check mark, is for those who purchase the subscription to X Premium, and you get that that check mark. So it's been automatically removed due to the fraudulent activity that is happening. But let's take a look at what CTV has to say about the entire situation. A disputed vote in Venezuela is raising serious concerns in Canada and with other Western democracies. Nicolas Maduro was declared winner of a third term. CTV's Colton Prail with reaction despite exit polls pointing to a landslide win by his opponent, Colton. Heather, both President Nicolas Maduro and challenger Edmundo Gonzalez say they won the election and they have the votes to prove it. But the tallies are wildly different. Exit polls showed a significant advantage for Gonzalez and the opposition. But early this morning, Venezuela's National Electoral Council called the race declaring President Nicolas Maduro's victory with 51% of the vote. Maduro calling his win irreversible and a victory against fascism. But the opposition says their data shows Gonzalez won 70% of the vote and allege election rules were violated at polling stations. Venezuela ceased being a democracy quite a long time ago. It is an openly authoritarian country and this was an authoritarian exercise in retaining power. Maduro was already accused of interfering in the previous presidential election, and he's facing drug trafficking and corruption charges in the United States. Many nations, including Canada, have previously refused to recognize him as the Venezuelan leader. Today, Ottawa among the many saying they have serious concerns about the election and calling for detailed polling results to be published. Canada has been supporting the democratic opposition and condemning an increasingly severe authoritarian regime in Venezuela. Well, if that's the case, it seems like Christian Freeland did comment on it, whereas Justin Trudeau has not. And that would be a very rare W for the Canadian government to actually go out, out of their way and say, hey, it seems like there's some election fraud going on. 
while all, you know, in the meantime, they're kind of authoritarian here in Canada. It's kind of crazy, but very rare W nonetheless. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Have you seen the footage of people in the streets protesting and just the, the bloodbath that is happening? That, again, will not be shown on YouTube, but you can find that on X. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Canadian poll. So you have... Justin Trudeau is still trailing behind significantly with 73 projected seats. And Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives are sitting at 212 with a bottom line of 178, top end at 234. Still well above the bare minimum that they need, 172 for a majority government. 99% likely to win the most seats and 99% likely for a majority uh, government. So everything there is looking good. What's not looking good is housing. This realtor right here says he came across a three-bedroom house in Windsor that was housing 17 students. Three bedrooms, 17 students, four of which are living in an unfinished basement on a mattress. I was with an investor looking at a few homes in Windsor today, and this is one of the homes we came across. Now, the landlord promises to have everyone out um, at the uh, time of closing, but um, I don't know. I kind of feel bad for the students in this one. I don't know. I it is very, very common for this to now be happening in Canada. Our population does not match how many houses we have. It, it just, it doesn't. So people are stacking up like sardines and it's very unfortunate. And uh, Justin Trudeau, you're going to see later on in this video, does make an announcement of housing, uh, but it's not really enough. Next up, we have this table here by Table Salt saying, breaking your effing wallet. Canadians now pay more in taxes than food, housing, and clothing combined. That is absolutely insane. And as you can see from the chart, as time has gone on, taxes have gone so high up that it actually does mean that when you combine shelter, food, and clothing costs, your people are paying more in taxes. That is absolutely atrocious. Canada is quickly becoming, if not already, one of the highest tax countries in the entire world. And our wages don't reflect that at all. In other news, you have liberals have always blamed Canada's housing woes on Airbnb. But a brand new Stats Canada study reveals that uh, STRs only make up of 0.69% of the housing stock in Canada. It was always just high immigration and high taxes. Again, the Canadian government is shown that they are what they are saying is being debunked constantly. Uh, it's almost like the government is lying to you and the mainstream media, the ones that are, I mean, pretty much all of them, but the, the main ones that are subsidized by the government are also lying to you, like in this next article here. So in Toronto in North York, there was a Jewish school bus, well, a school bus that is supposed to transport Jewish students, I suppose, uh, caught fire. And in this article, CTV said that no one got hurt, which is seems to be true, but also that this bus was just sitting in a lot and was basically decommissioned. Well, Ezra Levant, who runs Rebel News, quickly jumped on this and said, no, that the Toronto police told CTV News that the bus hadn't moved from the parking lot in 15 years. Well, Ezra is claiming otherwise. Ezra says, you're lying. I spoke with the owner. The school bus is used every, is used every school day, which is why CTV is trying to minimize this anti-Semitic hate crime. It's absolutely insane that the mainstream media is lying about stuff like this. But that's the state of Canada, right? Propaganda. Next up, we have Global News saying that several athletes have tested positive, including Australian swimmer who uh, was a medal hope for the women's 1500 meter freestyle, but had to withdraw from the event. It's absolutely sad that that's happening. It also sucks that the Olympics has been just so poorly organized and poorly branded to the point where you have hundreds of thousands if not millions of people that are boycotting it and don't want to watch it and it just it really sucks because the athletes have worked their entire lives to put on this spectacle of competing the best of the best and that got ruined with wokeism that's just the state of the world these days uh speaking of state we have a bit of an update here on jasper national park this is some of the aftermath footage here 
And it's kind of crazy. I'm not going to get conspiratorial, but you have a building that obviously burnt down, right? It's in ashes. You have some trees that are burnt to a crisp, and then you have uh, some other trees that are just completely untouched, like right next to it. Kind of wild that that has uh, happened, but here is what some of our government officials have said, such as our climate activist, Stephen Gilbo. The individual stories of bravery and hardship are something Canadians will always remember. This was the single largest fire in Jasper National Park history. Despite such hardship, it is worth celebrating that we have not reported any injuries or casualties. Around 358 structures, or roughly 30% of the town, was lost to the fire. So that statement right there is having a lot of backlash. He is suggesting that it's something worth celebrating because only 33 or 30% of the town was destroyed and no one was uh, injured or killed, which obviously, right, human life prioritized. Everyone is happy that that uh, was the outcome that it was. But celebrating that only 30%, I feel like it's going to take a lot of time for Canadians to heal over this tragic loss. And celebrating is not something that I don't, I don't think people are interested in doing about this forest fire. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And then we have a more up-to-date speech that Stephen Gilbo, our crazy radical climate activist, has uh, said here where he's saying this is why we need the carbon tax because of fires like the one that just happened. Happened. Stephen Gilbo, I'm Canada's Minister of Environment and Climate Change. We're here to talk about the Canada carbon rebate, which is one thing you'll never hear Pierre Polyev talk about. But the reality is that over the past few years, in fact, since 2019, eight out of 10 Canadians, low income to middle income Canadians, get more money back than they're paying for, for, for carbon pricing. That is a reality. That is a fact. And as carbon pricing goes up, so does the carbon rebate. The carbon rebate will go up April 1st, as will carbon pricing uh, as well. Uh, Pierre Poliev uh, was lying uh, last week when he said that there's no price on pollution for, for, for large polluters. That's simply not true. In fact, the price on pollution is much higher for, for our biggest polluters than it is for, for average Canadian, as it should be. And, and that continues to, 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 to go up. And they don't get a rebate because they should be paying as, as, as large emitter, as large... As, as large polluters. And the other thing you'll never hear Pierre Poliev talk about is the impacts of climate change and how much it's impacting Canadians, how much it's costing Canadians. We're talking about our fish stocks disappearing. There's no, there's no shrimp in the Gulf of St. Lawrence this, this summer. We're talking about Al the province of Alberta having to ration water for, for residents, for businesses, for the agricultural sector. Climate change is real, it's impacting Canadians, and it's costing Canadians, and you'll never hear Pierre Polyev talk about that. We're asking for we should weaponize the fact that a forest fire occurred due to lightning, which is a very common occurrence, uh, especially here in Canada, and we should increase taxes. I just don't think Canadians are buying it. We have a lot of taxes that Canadians are paying into. In fact, one of the most highest tax countries in the entire world. Why aren't we utilizing the already taxes that we have paid towards combating these things right getting more water bombers getting the resources set up in place i don't know when the snow melts because that's usually when fire season begins it's very predictable it's even on a freaking calendar but i guess no you need to increase taxes that's the only way money 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 all right now moving on to this very bizarre and developing story so there was not too long ago this post that went very viral right here that a woman claimed that people were defecating, specifically Indian immigrants were defecating in the sand at Wasaga Beach and digging holes under tents to use as bathrooms. This got so much attention that even the mainstream media picked it up. Global News picked it up saying poop on the beach. Ontario mayor slams social media misinformation. There is no way that these people far away from Wasaga Beach have seen people poop on the beaches. So therefore, it's not there. And albeit we haven't actually seen 
at least I personally haven't seen any photos or videos of this happening, but there are more and more testimonies of this happening. So much to the point that Wasaga Beach, the actual park, has made official statements saying that they have not observed none of the staff at Wasaga Beach or Ontario Parks have observed, observed the behavior during the regular park patrols of any pooping on the beaches. But if you do see it, please report it. Well, the reason why we're talking about this and it's a developing story is there's a post that went viral yesterday here in Canada on X and it's by Harrison Faulkner who works for True North who said, who posted this photo right here. Brampton man just couldn't walk the extra 15 yards to the bathroom. Harrison, we're in Canada. Use meters, please. Mass immigration is totally working. Now, Harrison Faulkner has had some very impressive coverage on, on True North, right? You can go to their YouTube channel or their whatever social media outlet you want. And he's gone and interviewed people that were protesting on the East Coast whose student visas were expiring. You know, the Indian immigrants from there as well as other Indian immigrants. And it's it's been very in-depth coverage where he's gone and talked to people in person, right? And there, there is a immigration problem. 1.2 million immigrants per year. It doesn't make sense. And I believe the majority by a landslide, like over 600,000 um, immigrants per year in Canada are from India. So the reason why this is having a lot of controversy is people are quick to jump. The Sikh community uh, are quick to jump to this individual's defense. So does this look like someone is defecating into a cup or not? I will leave that up to you to decide. But here's what some of the backlash is saying. This guy right here, Raj Grewal, is saying, I own this property. This did not happen. It is Photoshopped. Do better. And this reply has 2.7 million views. Now, we're going to get into who that person is in a moment. But as someone who has experience with Photoshop, um, it just seems very bizarre that someone would go through the lengths of adding in the reflections off of the vehicle, off of the windshield. It, it, like it, this just, this is some insanely high quality, high level Photoshopping. If that is the case, like you can see the man's face reflected there and it warps with the body of the car so much. So, and even his shoe, you can see there's a shadow under the shoe there. And then there's a shadow under the car door. And I just don't understand like what part is Photoshopped. This man is Photoshopped. That's not a real person or that's taken from a different part of the internet. And it's posted next to a car where they added, the reflection there and made it look like it was next to a or in in a tim hortons parking lot like i'm just not understanding where the photoshop is coming from so let's take a look at who this person is who is trying to claim that it's photoshop well raj grawal used to be a liberal a liberal member of parliament he was a liberal member of parliament in the house of commons from 2015 to 2019 now that is a bold claim to make saying that that is a photoshopped image as somebody who represented canada in the house of commons now here's what other members of either the Sikh community or from the defense side of this photo are saying this individual here is saying this old man spilled hot coffee on himself by accident stop making racist shit up i wonder if you got paid to spread this nonsense and this is approaching between a quarter of a million and half a million views and on this post you have a lot of rebuttals to it being spilled coffee yeah because it's so easy to spill coffee on the back of your pants but not the front and then someone else defending the defense saying they will spread fake news no matter what's the fact behind this and it's it's all just very confusing i mean just the photo alone never mind the act of it but just looking at the reflection here of the vehicle that would be insanely difficult to Photoshop. So I think people are moved past the point that it is Photoshop. And now we're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Did this individual spill coffee on themselves or is it something further? Well, when we look at more of the posts that are in defense of this old man, you see stuff like this. You are demented, 
pervert Harrison Faulkner. Looks like this gentleman spilled coffee on himself. He's not re- uh, relieving himself. Reflection also shows a different story. Your bigotry and hatred for old people and Sikhs has no limits. Report this jerk. Tag the RCMP. And he tagged Conservative Party and also tagged Anti-Hate Canada. And that's something that I saw quite a bit circulating around this photo was that people were quick to throw out the 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 name Anti-Hate. Where's the Anti-Hate? Where's the Anti-Hate? I'm just not really understanding how one, the original claim that it was Photoshop it is a valid claim. Like that just seems bizarre that someone would go to those lengths to photoshop but when we look at more of the comments here people are saying stop making racist shit up i won't be surprised if you got if you got paid to uh to spread this nonsense and then you have rowan who says canadians deserve better than to literally have our country shit on you couldn't pay me to ever set foot in brampton and the former liberal mp raj gorwal who owns the property insists this is fake but the reflection in the car says otherwise and so i just kind of want to pass the question off to you guys how do you feel about this how do you feel is it photoshop is it spilled coffee let me know what you guys think well harrison faulkner has this to say in response to raj's post it's where he said that it's photoshop harrison faulkner said <laughs> in a kind of a chad way prove it and then there's a lot of people that are calling out the, the bullshit of it being photoshopped bill Burr chris says it's not photoshopped uh you have diagonal members saying it's not photoshopped you have petrified covid parents saying you're lying you have keenan baxt you have zoltan you have a bunch of people saying that it's just absolutely false to make the claim that it is photoshopped and that is very real but i want to know what you guys think here on youtube next we have justin trudeau who is talking about housing. Let's take a look at this. Here's the deal. Canada just launched a plan to build close to 4 million new homes. It's big, it's happening, and it's going to drive down the cost of housing for you. And we're changing the rules of the game so that you can get into your new home sooner. Starting this August, when you take out a mortgage to buy one of those newly built homes, you're gonna have the option of repaying it over 30 years rather than just a regular 25. What that'll do was bring down your monthly payments. Now, it might not take you all 30 years to pay off that home. As you advance in your career and make more money, you can pay more per month and pay it off sooner. But it's giving you the option so you can get into that new home sooner. So this is having a lot of controversy and a lot of backlash and you have mortgage specialists that are very quick to jump on this and say, whoa, this is absolutely horrible. Locking in a mortgage that long means you're paying significantly more in interest and it just is a bad idea all around. It's giving more money to the banks, more money to the government, and it's basically validating the whole thing of you will own nothing and be happy. But I'd love to know what you guys think down below. Do you agree that Canada should have 30-year mortgages or do you disagree and let me know why? And to conclude this video, we have a breaking news post. I don't know why I left this for the end, but nonetheless, uh, for those that made it all the way to the end, you are blessed with this little nugget here. So Michael Barrett, conservative MP says, breaking news, public records confirm Randy Bostino's business partner lied before a committee. This calls into question his entire story, including nine text messages referencing Randy were autocorrects and that he never spoke to minister Randy Bostino since 2021. I feel like we're going to see Randy either get shuffled into a different position or potentially even at the back bench or shuffled out of the Liberal Party. The Liberals are barely, barely holding their head above water. And a lot of people would say that they are well below water and they're pretty much drowning and sinking that entire ship. And there's a good argument for both. But nonetheless, the point is that liberals are not doing good. And if they ever want to hold any sort of of a chance and win Canadians over, they need to rebrand themselves. Getting rid of someone like Randy, who brings a lot of negative uh, press to the Liberal Party, a lot of uh, corruption is a step in the right direction. But then you also have to get rid of 
mm, everybody else from the Liberal Party. So start with Randy, and then let's see if we can go from top down, get rid of Justin Trudeau, get rid of Freeland, and get rid of everybody else, and let's bring in a whole new wave of people, rebrand it, and then maybe we can get rid of the radicalization of this woke mind virus that's kind of plaguing Canada. That would be an awesome first step. Let me know what you guys think down below about my strategy. That's what we're going to end this video, folks. On your way out, I would like to encourage you guys to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.